You might be hurting your Instagram channel if you're listening to some of the really terrible advice that is out there on social media about how to grow on Instagram. Now, I have been teaching Instagram to thousands of entrepreneurs for many, many years now, and I keep hearing some really bad advice. We're going to do a little myth busting today, but this is just the tip of the iceberg. So if you want to see more follow-ups or sequels to this, go ahead and follow down below. And if you hear something in the world of advice that you're not sure if it's a red flag or a green flag, go ahead and drop that down below. We will get those answered in upcoming questions and in the comment section as well. Now, one of the big things that I'm hearing right now is that you should only be doing video on Instagram. And this is simply not true. While Instagram is heavily leaning into video, we're still seeing a swing back toward photos. Instagram started off as a photo-based platform, then they gave us access to stories and videos and live streams and now reels. And reels are doing really well because of the rise of TikTok. Everybody's jumping on this short form content, but we're starting to see more of a desire to have those pretty pictures back. We're not necessarily looking for the highly curated magazine quality Instagram of several years ago, but we are looking for those pretty lifestyle images so that we can relate. And we are looking for things that have text on them. We are looking for things that are quotes or inspiration, things that we can share. So people do want to see photos and quote graphics and all those pretty things on Instagram as well. Instagram is kind of a catch-all of the content that you can create. So while you should be heavily focused on video, it should not be your sole focus. We want to make sure that as you're putting out this really pretty video content that you're also repurposing from your TikTok, from your YouTube shorts, from the other places that you are doing things native to Instagram. And none of the other social platforms rely heavily on photos. So this is going to be really, really good for you to grow through photos, through quote graphics. And you, of course, can reuse these on Facebook and places like that too. But you should have a decent mix of your videos and your photos when it comes to your Instagram because it works really well for you. But that also also brings me to my next point. One of the really bad pieces of advice that I'm hearing is that your Instagram stories should only be for sharing the posts that you've already created. That is just terrible advice. Terrible advice. You want to make sure that your stories are going to be relevant to your life right here and now in this moment. Stories are designed to, dis to disappear after 24 hours, meaning you have to create and then it goes away. So it's real time. It is real moment. Your stories are where most people get the most views and the most engagement and interaction on their platform because it's not as polished. It's not as curated. It's not as intentional. It is conversational. It is what I'm doing every single day. It's what we're doing as we're going through our lives. It's answering questions. It's having conversations. It's bridging that gap between the person watching us and us. It makes them feel like we're including them and they are a part of our lives. So stories are really important and putting a lot of stories works to your benefit. Now you shouldn't be doing like 30 stories a day. That's a lot for people to sit and click through, but you should be doing a decent amount of those stories where you're just having conversations throughout the day and you should space them out as well. It's not something where you dump it in the morning and that's it. You want to make sure throughout the day you're checking in with your people, letting them in on what you're doing and how you're doing it and all of those things. And then you can also mix in the content that you are creating on your profiles and show it there as well. Because when you get views on your stories, it counts. So many people, here's another one that I wasn't going to talk about, but here is a good one. When you post on stories, if you're posting your new post... You don't need to cover it up because that counts toward your views. Stop covering it up. Stop, stop covering it up. Just let people watch it. Nobody's going to take the extra click. You're actually hurting yourself by covering it because people aren't going to click over to watch it. You're going to have a lower viewership on that. So just let it go. Let it post it. Post it. It counts. It counts. So then when you are creating your content, another thing that comes up quite often is hashtags. Now, Literally years ago, literally years ago, people don't know about this, but I've done videos on it. So if you want the latest and greatest on Instagram or any of the social platforms, please follow me. As soon as something changes, I tell you, I still have people years later discovering these things. Instagram specifically said five or less hashtags. Anything else confuses your post. It confuses your algorithm. And they also were incredibly clear. Now it needs to be in the caption of your post, not in the comments. If you're putting it in the comments, it's not going to be on the explore tab for those hashtags. Five or less hashtags, the most relevant things. And if you're tagging things, tagging or hashtagging things that are not in your photo 
or your video or in the conversation or in the caption, you will potentially be deranked for that. So let's say you post a video and you tag Kim Kardashian and it has nothing to do with the Kardashians. The algorithm understands what you're talking about, who is in this video, the background elements in your video, they analyze it. They know exactly what's going on inside of your post. If Kim Kardashian is nowhere to be found and you're tagging her, they are actually going to remove that from some of the search stuff. So you have to be very good, very qualified about what you are going to be saying inside of your post so that the algorithm actually knows what is in there and it puts it in the correct place. And finally, one of the biggest things that I am seeing right now inside of the terrible advice world of Instagram is that after you post, you should leave. And that is just the worst advice. You should not be leaving right after you post because the algorithm is watching you. They know what you're doing. If you're showing up just to get people to give to you and you're not giving back to the community, they're not going to level you up. Your goal here is to be a good community member. So you should be going into your app, probably playing around a little bit, go through some people's stories, do a little bit of stuff, then post your content, then stay for at least 10 or 15 minutes to engage with other people's content. You are being there to support the community and not just to take from the community. So that means go and watch other people's content, comment, like, share, send it in the DMs. We want to make sure that we are building other people up and not just the oh, this is so cute, you should come look at my profile kind of content. This is very much where you are going to have an actual intelligent conversation with people. Ask a question, tell them what they're doing is really great. Do not leave comments that are like, so cute, heart emoji. Don't do that. Five or more words on your comments and make sure that it is a good, qualified, connected comment to whatever it is that you are watching. Scroll through your feed, watch people's stories, like and interact and engage with people. That shows that you are there for the community, not just for what you can take from them. And that typically does better for your posts. You also want to make sure that you're kind of spacing out your posts, but not by like days. You should be posting frequently. If you're going to be posting more than one thing a day, and you should. You want to make sure you space that out by a couple of hours just so it has a little bit of time in the algorithm system. And then you are engaging with other people frequently. Now, like I said, this was just the tip of the iceberg. There are so, so, so many other really terrible pieces of advice that are floating around out there because anybody can say anything on the internet and you can believe them. So if you have a question on something that you've seen, ask it now. Ask it down below. I will tell you if it's a red flag or a green flag. Again, I have been doing this for many, many years and I am the top, one of the top ranking educators on um, on YouTube about Instagram, about TikTok, about YouTube, and about live streaming. So if you've got questions, you can check my credentials and then you can drop those down below. I am here to make sure that I am helping you out to grow and to thrive in your space as well, because I want this to be your most profitable year ever with least amount of stress and overwhelm and time commitment on the content you are creating from start to finish. Should be under five minutes for 90% of what you do. And I teach you how here on the channel. So we'll see you in those upcoming episodes.